So in my initial coverage of this year's Apple October event, there's been a lot of excitement and the engagement from you guys in the comment section has been off the charts. And one of the things that keeps coming up over and over again is people want to know what are the actual models of Mac that I personally bought. So I have a whole video that was a buyer's guide on what to look for if you're deciding to upgrade to one of these new machines. But today what we're gonna talk about are the actual M1 Pro and M1 Max devices that I personally bought for this channel. And so rather than trying to pick options that I thought were the best value to me specifically, I was trying to pick a wide range that would be applicable to you guys. And that's the difference that we're going to talk about today. Uh, so I bought five of these things, which is kind of crazy. Um, we'll figure out exactly how much I spent in this video because I, I haven't actually calculated it. But if you want to help me afford all of these things, definitely leave a like, get subscribed, and I don't know, don't skip the ads. This is a really expensive Apple season, but you know what? We got to do it. Let's hop into this video. So yeah, I bought five of the new MacBook Pros. Kind of absurd. Uh, the sticker shock hasn't really impacted me yet because the orders haven't like come and asked for their money. So it hasn't hit me yet, but any, any, any moment now, I'm going to be absolutely inundated with massive bills. So while that's happening, we might as well have a little bit of fun here and talk about the different models of MacBook Pro that I ordered. Now, this was not something that I was expecting to have to do. I was not going into the Apple event saying, you know what, I'm gonna buy five of these gosh darn things. But Apple had so many more configurations than we were expecting. I mean, when you look at the M1 MacBooks, there's basically two different versions of them. And then I guess two further versions after that. So you either have the cut down binned one with the seven core GPU, or you have the full one with the eight core GPU. And then either of those two options come with eight or 16 gigabytes of RAM. That's basically it. Storage, I don't really count because that's not a difference on the actual SOC. The unified memory is a variation. Now with these M1 Pro and M1 Max devices, we kind of thought, hey, maybe they'll do the same thing. You know, we had the 16 core GPU, the 32 core GPU, 16 gigs of RAM, 32, maybe 64 gigabytes of RAM. Seems simple enough. But then they had to come out here and say, hey, guess what, folks? We're gonna have an eight core CPU as well as a 10 core CPU. And also we're gonna have a 14, 16, 24, and 32 core GPU. And also some of the RAM isn't available with some of the GPUs. And also there's memory bandwidth and displays. There's way more going on than anybody in the world of tech predicted. And on the one hand, that's super exciting because it means you guys get more choice and therefore there's a lot more interesting content that is going to help you make those choices. But on the other hand, it means I gotta get five of these gosh darn things just to get my head around this comparison and all of these different configurations. I mean, think of all the questions that are going through my head as a reviewer trying to give you guys complete information. You might be sitting at home going, oh, that's cool, for $2,500, I could either get the 14 inch with the full fat M1 Pro and a terabyte, or I could get the 16 inch with half the storage, but the same internals. But I'm sitting here as a reviewer going, wait, but are they really the same internally? Do they really perform exactly the same or are there thermal differences? Are there long-term performance drop-offs that you'll find on the 14 inch that you won't on the 16 inch? These are the types of questions going through my head and the only way to solve them is to buy more darn MacBooks. At this point, I've belabored the point enough. Why don't we hop into the Apple Store configurator and I'll tell you guys which ones I bought. So the first configuration that I ordered should be a no brainer if you're a longtime watcher of the channel and that is the completely stock base model 14 inch. This one really, really intrigues me because it's drawn mixed reactions. Some people are saying, oh, that's so shit of Apple to like, cut down the CPU and the GPU. It's a double binned processor and you're still paying $2,000. You can't even get the full thing. But that's exactly what intrigues me because you see, we don't know a dang thing about how this thing is gonna perform. Apple gave us some vague comparisons for the 10 core with the 16 core GPU, 
but not for the 8 and the 14. They didn't even tell us that existed until the store page went up. So for that reason, I had to get it. I have to find out if this thing is actually decent or if it's overpriced or if the 67 watt USB-C charger that comes with it is insufficient. That's gonna be, you know, day one. That's like one of the first videos that I'm gonna make is on this base model. Now, the second configuration that I ordered was also a 14 inch MacBook Pro, and that was with the upgraded 10 core CPU and 16 core GPU, because you gotta see how this thing performs with the full fat M1 Pro. And then what I did was upgrade to one terabyte of storage. Now, this is also one of the pre-built configurations that you can buy. It's literally right here. But I figured that this was a pretty good one to try because that M1 Pro seems like the obvious choice to get. That seems like the desirable one. And I think the comparison between the full M1 Pro and the cut down M1 Pro could be potentially quite interesting. Because if the M1 Pro is as powerful as Apple says it is, maybe the cut down one is still faster than whatever you could find for $2,000. Only time will tell. The other thing time will tell is whether I made a wise investment buying a third 14 inch MacBook Pro. That's right, I got three of these things. Now I didn't get the fully loaded one with the 32 core GPU because I wanted to try something a little bit different. Basically what I did was start with the $2,000 base model and I only clicked one button and that is the 24 core GPU. Boom. Now obviously that's gone up to $2,900 because once you add the M1 Max, you also have to add 32 gigabytes of RAM. Okay, cool. But then I left the storage at 512 because I basically wanted to find out how good the cheapest M1 Max is, right? Apple's talking about this thing, like, oh my God, you can plug in three Pro Display XDRs. You got 400 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth. Like this thing is absolutely bananas. And I was like, okay, well, I should buy the least expensive one of that. The, the absolute minimum bar for entry to get into the M1 Max is this configuration. And at sub $3,000, it could be a good value or, at almost $3,000, it could be very, very expensive for the absolute bare minimum of the M1 Max. The other reason I bought this thing, frankly, is I really wanna see what that 24 core GPU is all about. Again, Apple told us what the 16 core and the 32 core are gonna be like, but they didn't tell us anything about what the 24 or the 14 are gonna be like. Now for my fourth MacBook Pro, I thought, why don't we just go ahead and play it safe? Let's get a standard configuration, one that most people would walk into an Apple store and buy once these things are readily available. And that is the entry level 16 inch MacBook Pro. Now, technically I got the mid tier one because it has a terabyte of storage. Internally, they're the same, right? It's the 10 core CPU, the 16 core GPU, and then it's 16 gigabytes of RAM. So functionally, performance-wise, they're identical. The only difference is the storage. And that's the thing that really interests me, is that this mid-tier one has the exact same internals, down to the storage and everything, as the 14-inch that I bought, but it's $200 more expensive. Now, the difference that Apple would tell you between those two is that you get, well, a larger screen, better battery life, and the 140-watt charger, and that's basically it. But I'm interested to see if there's actually other differences. Are the SSDs the same speed? Is the GPU the same speed? Does the CPU throttle in the 14 inch? These are the things that I really wanna find out. And so that was one of the things I wanted to do with the MacBooks that I bought. I wanted to get the same exact internals in both screen sizes so that I could compare between them. And now we gotta talk about the final, the fifth MacBook Pro that I ordered and I think I went, I think I might've gone a bit crazy on this one because, well, I mean, what I did was I, I looked at the 16 inch tab here and then I looked all the way over to the right and I saw that purple M1 Max. Now I know that you can add that to whatever you want, but I saw it sitting there and it was just so tempting. And I saw 34.99, but my brain said, forget about that, click select. I looked here and I said, wow, this is pretty crazy, you get 32 gigabytes of RAM. And then I thought, ignore that, 64, let's do it. And then I clicked add to bag. You guys, I spent $4,000 on a 
on this darn laptop. So yeah, that is the most powerful 16 inch MacBook Pro, the most powerful MacBook Pro full stop that you can buy ever in all of time. Now I didn't upgrade the storage because for me, I edit videos on a 48 terabyte RAID array. I don't necessarily need a ton of internal storage. In retrospect, I think the better value would have been to stick with 32 gigabytes of RAM and then put the money into a two terabyte SSD just to give myself a little bit more wiggle room. But that's something that I've got to save for the full review because I want to see if that 64 gigabyte of RAM option is actually worth it. It's 400 buckaroonies and, and I cannot possibly imagine that it's justifiable given how good unified memory is. But that's, I guess, another reason why I bought it is we got to find that out because think of it this way. Unified memory isn't just like RAM for your applications. It's also your VRAM for that 32 core GPU. And so then I was like, okay, maybe it's not that bad that I spent $4,000 on the most powerful MacBook Pro ever made, because at the very least, I'll be able to see if I can even use that much RAM. I think that's a whole video right there. Don't you guys think? A whole entire video called like, can you even use 64 gigabytes of RAM in one of these things? We're gonna find out. If you have any suggestions, things that you do on your computer that use a buttload of RAM that you want me to try on this thing, let me know in the comments below because I feel like that video is gonna be a lot of fun. So those are the five MacBook Pros that I ordered. And well, I guess we gotta figure out how much I spent, shouldn't we? Right, well, the first one was $19.99 before tax. I don't feel like calculating tax because I'm lazy, so $19.99. And then I spent another $24.99 on the second 14 inch. And then I spent $28.99 on the third 14 inch. Okay, so we're already over $7,000. Oh my God, okay. And then I spent $26.99 on the 16 inch MacBook Pro and then $38.99 on another one. Oh my God, I spent $14,000. I spent $14,000 on MacBooks and they're all like the same MacBook. I don't even know what to say. You guys better get subscribed because I gotta justify all this somehow. So yeah, this, this is an expensive season for me, but make sure you guys get subscribed. You know what? I don't, I don't even care that I spent $14,000. I'm just excited to get my hands on the first major redesign to the MacBook Pro in five years. And if you guys are too, then you won't have to wait much longer. So with that, I'll see you guys in the next video.